In this video, I'll break down some really cool seamless transition ideas that you can use in your videos. In this video, I'll break down some really cool seamless transitions that you can use in your videos. Now, don't worry, you're not gonna need any presets or any plugins. You can simply create all these transitions in your camera and then editing them in Final Cut. The first transition I wanna go over is this really cool like J and L cut. So as you can see, I had this clip right here with some dialogue. Let's say I wanna create like one of those like J and L cuts. If I zoom in right here, as you can see, the audio and the video are like connected together. But let's say you wanna like deconnect or disconnect the audio and the video. So what you do is you select on the video, all you want to do is click on the keyboard shortcut Control S. So if I click on Control S, I now basically separated the audio and the video. So now you can create a J or an L cut, so you can take the video, so if I can take the video clip, if I go ahead and just move it over to create like an L cut, or you could go ahead and create like a J cut, if I go ahead over here, select on the video and then drag it over here, now I can create like a J cut. So if I go ahead and do it here, as you can see, see now you have like an L cut right here, and now you have a J cut right here. So basically just one of those simple J and L cuts. Now let's say you wanna go ahead and put the audio and the video back together. Well, that's simple. All you do is select on the clip again and then just click on Control S and now you're putting the video and audio back together. That is how you create a J and L cut. Now the next cut I wanna go over is this really cool like transition where you kinda of cover the camera and then uncover the camera. So you can see, this is just a very basic example. As you can see, I'm just, like I'm just recording myself and I'm putting my hand up to the camera. As you can see, I'm just basically covering the camera. So that is shot number one. Now shot number two, because I ended shot number one covering the camera, I am now going to start shot number two covering the camera. And as you see, I'm removing my hands to uncover the camera. So that's basically what you're doing. The first shot is you're covering the camera and the second shot you're starting with the camera covered and then like revealing whatever the next shot is. Now what you wanna do is you wanna pick things that are like similar in color. Now this transition isn't like super perfect, the lighting is a little bit off. You could of course adjust that in post, but let's say you're zooming into like, let's say like a black um, backpack. Well, the next shot you wanna zoom out of like a black shirt. So you wanna make sure the colors are similar. That way it's not super harsh. Ideally, you really wanna cover and make the screen completely black. But again, you just wanna do your best to match the colors and you can go through and color grade to make the lighting look a little bit better. But that's just the basic idea. It's a really cool, simple transition. The next transition I wanna go over is this really cool like clean plate transition. So what you wanna do is you wanna film like a shot of the background. Now it's really important that you put your camera settings on manual and that you set the camera on the tripod. You do not want the camera to move. So as you can see here's the background that all I'm doing is I'm just stepping into the shot. So as you can see background and then I'm just stepping into the shot. So basically I took a shot of the background didn't move my camera at all, stepped into the frame, and there you go, you have a really cool like, clean plate transition. Now another thing that I did too to make it look even cooler was I went to the beginning of the clip where I'm stepping in frame, and then I just simply added like a shape mask, and I added a really cool like wave effect, so as you can see if I go frame by frame, you can see I'm just animating a shape mask, and I just add a really cool like wave effect. It's just a really subtle effect just to give the transition a little more like life, or give it a little more of an impact, but it's, re it's a really, really cool transition. There are a whole bunch of creative ways you can use this. I just to give you the basic idea of how to do it. The next transition I want to go over is really cool like slow shutter transition. So if I go ahead and play the clip right here, as you can see it's like really like low shutter and the whole thing is just really blurry. Now in order to create this effect, all you're going to do is just simply don't mess with anything else in your camera. All you're simply going to do is you're going to decrease your shutter speed. So just lower it as, uh, just basically Bring your shutter speed as low as you possibly want. The lower the shutter speed, the more blurry it's going to be, so it's completely up to you. Now, I shot this as like a video clip, but you could also actually like take individual photos, so move forward, take a photo, move forward, take a photo. And again, you just wanna make the shutter speed really low. Now, to make the effect look even cooler is you want really fast, sudden movement. So, rotating your camera, panning it left and right, you want really quick, sudden movements, and that's how you're gonna get that really blurry effect. If you just kinda of like slightly move your camera, it's not gonna look super blurry, so you wanna whip your camera to the right, whip your camera to the left, left, right, left, right, you wanna go back and forth or you wanna rotate your camera. Really quick, sudden movements and with a really low shutter speed, it's going to create a really cool effect as you can see right here. The next transition I'll go over is really cool like object wipe transition. And you can either have your camera panning like across like an object or you can have somebody walk across the screen. So if I go ahead and select this clip right here, if I go ahead and just simply de uh, uh, disable the draw mask, basically just so you can 
see what the original shot looks like. I'll go ahead and just also disable this motion blur just so it's not going to lag the playback. But let me show you what the original shot looked like. I'm just going to break down how I create it. So if I play the clip right here, as you can see, all the clip is is just me walking across the camera. Now, really, really important. You want basically the entire subject, as you see it's starting right here, you want this subject to completely walk across the frame. Or if you're panning the photo, you want the object to be completely panned across the frame. That is really important. So if I, if I just like stopped right here, the transition just wouldn't really look good. Now the other important thing too is that you want your subject to be completely filling the frame. So the top of the frame or the bottom of the frame. If I had some space like right here or some space right here, it wouldn't really look good. So you want to make sure the subject is completely like this, as you can see, completely covering the screen from top to bottom and it's come and just walking across the entire frame. Now if I go ahead and just select this clip right here, you're basically just going to figure out where you want the transition to actually start. As you can see, I want the transition to start here because you can see the, uh, the next frame you can see right here. So you're just cutting out like this section. So as you can see, I want to cut out here. So basically you're just going to locate where you want to start. Then you, what you want to do is head over to the effects panel and then you want to apply a draw mask. And then simply what you want to do is you want to go to transform. As you can see, I placed keyframes on transform and then I place a keyframe on control points you're animating this draw mask so if I zoom out to let's say like 50% so you can see what's happening if I go frame by frame you can see all I'm doing is I'm just animating the draw mask so you're just keyframing going frame by frame and you're just simply like adjusting the control points as you can see that way that entire you want the entire frame eventually to be black now one thing you can do too to make it to really make sure you're like precise with draw mask is you actually go over to here to uh, composite and switch it over to original so you can actually really see the shot so it's a lot easier easier to see what you're actually masking out. That is a really um, nice tip. And at the end, you want to change it back to composite. Now what you want to do is you want to basically place a clip below it. So if I go ahead and take a clip and then I'm just going to place this clip below the like the, the clip where the, the subject is walking across the screen. And as you can see, because I use a draw mask, there we go. Simple as that. Now you create this really cool, like see I'm walking across the frame, key from the mask and then I'm revealing the clip below it. Now what you can do too is you can also add some motion blur. So if I add motion blur, that is going to smooth out the edges and make it look a lot nicer. You could also add directional blur, but there you go. That's how you create that really famous like object wipe transition. The next transition I want to go over is a really cool speed ramp transition. Now one thing to keep in mind is if you're slowing down a clip, you want the frame rate of the clip to be higher than your project setting. So if I go ahead and scroll down until I actually find the clip, so here's the clip. If I select the clip, as you can see, the frame rate is 59.94, which is essentially 60 frames per second. And if I go to the actual project, as you can see, this project is at 30 frames per second, which means we can slow the clip down 50% because the original is 60 frames per second and the project is 30 frames per second. So of course half of, so basically you divide that by half, 60 divided by half is 30. So that's why you can slow it down to 50%. Now let me just get to basically give you a basic idea of how to do it. Now of course you could also do this 120. Now if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't, I'm not always going to remember the exact math. Well, it's really easy. And I'll go ahead and show you that in a second. But what I would do first, if you're doing like B-roll is I would select the clip over here, scroll down, and then I would basically select, so enable stabilization and then just mess with the different settings and final cut will automatically start stabilizing the clip and you could adjust the settings. So I'd first stabilize the clip. Now what you would do is once you have the clip stabilized, or of course if you're shooting at a gimbal, you're not gonna have to do this, but we're gonna go and select this clip. We can head over here to the speed option. So click on speed option and click on automatic speed. And it's going, final cut is gonna do the math for you and it's gonna automatically slow the clip down as slow as you possibly can. So because it's 60, the 60 frames per second clip in a 30 frames per second timeline, we can slow it down by half. So if you click on automatic speed, as you can see, Final Cut automatically slowed the clip down to 50%. So if you're using like a 120 frames per second clip or a 240 or whatever the highest frame rate is, Final Cut is gonna automatically do the math for you. And if I go ahead and play the clip, as you can see, the whole clip just looks a lot smoother. Now let me basically show you how to now create the actual speed ramping part of the transition. Now what you want to do is you want to basically identify where you want to speed up. So let's say we want up to here, we want this part slow, but we want this part sped up. So select the clip and all you're going to do is click on shift B. So uh, the keyboard shortcut shift B and basically all you're doing is you're not blading the clip, you're blading the speed of the clip. Now you can speed it up. If I go over here to this drop down arrow, as you can see, you have the slow, fast, you can go ahead and um, select a custom speed so let's go to like fast and let's say we want to increase it to like eight percent and because we blended the speed we're only increasing that part of the clip as you can see the rest of the clip is slowed down so if i go ahead and play the clip right here as you can see it's sped up so if i play the clip right here sped up and then it slows down 
So there we go. That's how you create like one of those cool like speed ramp um, transitions. They can go over here and basically like adjust a whole bunch of other settings. You can adjust like the transition. So you see, we can drag it right here. We can uh, uh, mess with the transition right here. You could of course go to each one of these drop down arrows and change it if you want. And uh, that's just a uh, one really cool tip. So you see, that's basically this is just kind of the transition. So how slow or how fast it's going into like the full speed or slowing down. So you see, if we play the clip right here. It's sped up. So sped up and then it slows down. And there we go. That's basically really you know, another really cool thing you can do too is you can actually go over here and like double click right here. As you can see, you can go like, like edit source frame. You can um, like enable a speed transition. We can go to edit source frame and we can mess with this source frame. As you can see, we're just messing with the source frame. And there you go. You double click it to get rid of it. So that's a really cool tip. And there, literally as simple as that, you've created a really cool speed ramp transition. So see, it speeds up and then slows down. So speeds up and slows down. And you could also do too is you could add some motion blur on top of the the actual transition so see if we go ahead and go back to the beginning where it's sped up you can see it adds a little bit of blur and just overall smooths out the transition so you're basically only putting it on the part where it's sped up so if we go ahead and play the clip right here it's sped up as you see there's a little bit of motion blur sped up and then it just slows down. That's how you create a speed ramp transition. The next transition I wanna go over is this really cool like whip pan transition. Now the important thing is, is you're moving the camera in both, in the same direction in both shots. Cause you can see the direction, so you're starting out the shot like this, and then basically you're here, I'm basically I just had the shot on the actual, like my um, my dresser right there. If I go ahead and then, you just wanna give, me, give like a couple seconds just holding the camera still. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna, I'm holding the camera handheld, I am just, really quickly whipping the camera to the right. So I'm uh, holding the camera right here and then I'm whipping it to the right. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go to the second clip and you wanna also start by whipping it into the right. So you see, I'm whipping it into the right and then as you can see, there we go. There is shot number one. So the first shot I'm whipping to the right and the next shot I'm also whipping to the right and you're creating this really cool like seamless transition so we go ahead and play the clip right here. So go ahead, let's just disable a clip number one. So you can see I'm just holding the camera and then I'm slowly whipping it to the right. So there we go. And there's the end of clip number one. Now we go ahead over here to clip number two. Let's start at clip number two. I'm starting it also by whipping it to the right. And as you can see, now we're into shot number two. And basically what you wanna do is, this is kind of like just kind of your trial and error. Basically what you're trying to do is because you're whipping it so fast, you're, you're essentially using motion blur as you can see right here. And you're basically using the motion motion blur so you go frame by frame let's go back a more frames if I go frame by frame as you can see I'm using the motion blur so that was a really seamless cut I'm using the motion blur to hide the cut so if I play the clip again right here as you can see there we go I'm just simply using the motion blur to hide that really like apparent jump cut and that's all you're gonna do the most important thing again is make sure whatever you're doing whipping up or down you're doing the the same direction in both shots to create a seamless transition and the next transition I'm gonna go over is just a simple jump cut. So you just have two clips. So if we go over here, here's clip number one, and then here is clip number two. Just a simple jump cut. It's a really effective um, transition, but I just wanted to include that in the video, just in case you weren't aware of that. Simple jump cuts can be really effective. You don't wanna use them too much because they can be too jarring, but they are just a simple transition. The last transition I wanna go over is called a match cut. So basically what you're doing is you're changing something but also keeping something the same. Kinda of like the clean plate transition. As you can see, I have a shot of me basically editing a video. But in this case, the, it's, I'm basically like editing with uh, white lights. Now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna change blue lights. So the me sitting, me sitting editing in my desk, everything is the same, but the only thing that has changed is the lighting has changed to blue so this is just a really cool transition so let's say like for let's say a sports video you're basically like having like let's say a player wearing a whole bunch of different colored jerseys but he has the same number so basically if you compile a whole bunch of those shots and lining up the number and just like the like, so the, the number of the jersey is the same but maybe the color of the jersey is changing it's a really simple transition but executed correctly it's just really clean so as you see simple as that so basically almost every Everything is the same you want to keep something the same but you also want to change something as you can see there we go so again me editing at my desk has is, is, is completely the same in both shots but something is changing where the lighting is changed to blue so there are a whole bunch of really cool like examples of match cut transitions I'm um, sure you can go on YouTube and look up like match cut ideas 
really cool transition. I just wanted to make you aware of that really cool transition, or maybe you're just not even aware of what the name of that transition is. It's a match cut, in my opinion, it's the coolest transition in basically all of filmmaking history. I love the match cut transition. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you learned something, and hopefully you take away something from this video. This is just really cool ideas, and hopefully you go ahead and use some of the, these ideas in your own videos. And before you go ahead and click on this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're looking for some really cool Final Cut Pro plugins, presets, and overlays, definitely go ahead and check out my digital store. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.